everyone, it's Jen Raza from Art Change of Art, and today I have a little mini tutorial video for you. If you follow my blog, maybe you saw a few weeks ago, I posted a Christmas card that had a really pretty leaf die on the front, and I did a gradient effect with the glitter. Some of you emailed me to ask how I did the card, so I posted a follow-up with the explanation, and I still got a few questions from some of you, so I decided to put together this tutorial so you could see it live and in action. Now since I don't have the card, I actually gave it to my friend Laura Pryor, who is the owner of Little Anchor. I'll just show you a little picture of it, like right here. And that card was made using one of their really pretty full card cover-up dies. So in honor of that card, I'll be making a second card today using a different die that is also equally amazing from Little Anchor and doing the same glittering technique. It's really fun, a little bit messy, but super sparkly and really gorgeous. So I hope you give it a try. Let's get started. So this is the die I was talking about. This one is the Pieced Chevron cover-up die from Little Anchor. And what I love about this is that when you cut it out, you are left with this gorgeous, intricate pattern, this really pretty chevron pattern for you to use on your cards. And you also get a whole bunch of confetti. <laughs> now I might be crazy, but every time I use this die, I save it as if like, oh my gosh, I have all these triangles and parallelograms. I'm totally going to use them on a card one day. And I've never used them on a card. They just keep piling up. I have so many. But sure enough, one day I'll appreciate the fact that I saved these. So I'll put them off to the side in my little baggie and maybe you'll see them show up on the blog. Probably not, but we'll see. All right, so let's get this guy out of the way. Now, the adhesive to use is definitely a dry adhesive. I think a liquid adhesive could make the paper buckle too much or the cardstock will buckle. You could also get blobs and globs and a not, a not smooth enough finish. So I like to use adhesive sheets. I have some what's called simple adhesive from Clear and Simple Stamps. These are just adhesive sheets. You could get any type of adhesive sheet. If you didn't have that, you can also use stuff like this or like a score tape, you just may have to put a few strips on your project to cover up the whole surface. You want there to be a lot of adhesive and a strong one too for the glitter to adhere. Now I can't tell you that no glitter will come off because it's kind of inevitable, but really using a, a strong adhesive can minimize that. Now instead of cutting a piece of the adhesive, I'm going to work directly on this and cut away what I don't need. So give me a moment while I just try to get that pesky cover piece off. Ah. Oh, almost got it. Sorry, you have to watch this. And to make sure I get some really good placement, I'm going to fold this over so there's only a little bit of the heat adhesive exposed and line up the die along the, or the die cut along the edge. You could also line it up along the bottom edge as well or the top. But I always worry that I might get a little bit crooked and then you might run off the bottom of the adhesive sheet. So this is a lot safer. And now that the end is tacked down, I can go ahead and peel the rest off as far as I need it and carefully just lightly tack it down. It doesn't have to be really strong at this point because I'm going to come back now with this and rub down really well. You really want to get this um, die cut stuck down as perfectly as you can because if there's a little spot that's not adhered, there can be some sneaky glitter that gets underneath. I'm going to use an uh, acrylic block because this is the closest thing that was within arm's reach, but if you have a bone folder or a credit card or whatever, can, this can help you just burnish this down into the adhesive. Alrighty. Now I can see where that is. I'm just going to do a little rough cut to get this out of the way and I can use that on another project. And now I have adhesive here and I'm just going to double check to make sure that I did a good job. 
pressing it in and it looks like I did. Now at this point I'm going to cut off the bottom edge. I don't want any stray glitter wandering over here because then it's just going to be a little messier to um, cut off later. And I'm using Teflon coated scissors so that they don't get ruined when I cut through the adhesive. And I'm going to be really careful not to touch any of that because the oils from my fingers and hands could get there and then it won't be as effective of an adhesive if that happens. Now this backing sheet I'm going to hold on to. You will see it will become very important in just a little bit. Now I'm going to embarrass myself by showing you my glitter collection. I'm going to look like a crazy glitter freak once you see this, but what happened was I went into, I think Joann's, and they had like the massive Martha Stewart glitter collection on sale. I think it's usually like 50 or $60 or something, some crazy amount, and it's like all the colors that you could imagine in glitter. And I think it was 19 95 and I was able to use my teacher's discount so if any of you are teachers there don't forget to use your Joanne discount and now I have like all of these glitter colors it could take me a lifetime before I ever finish but I'm glad that I have lots to choose from when I'm doing my glitter projects so the ones that I'm going for today are nice pastels these make me think of like sherbet or something and again, these are from Martha Stewart. I love how fine and sparkly the glitter is from Martha Stewart, but any glitter would work, even the, the chunky stuff. So make sure you burnish it well at the end, but I think it would look really awesome if you used some thick, chunky glitter. Now, anytime I'm working with glitter, I put down some scrap paper, and you guys know me. I, I can't throw anything out. Like, I, I can't throw this stuff out. I can't throw little papers out until they are completely destroyed. So this is a well-loved piece of computer paper. So I'm going to begin with the, let's see. I'm going to get, begin with the feldspar at the bottom. Now, when you do this, you're going to be throwing away the excess glitter and it won't be able to go back into the containers. So you want to be really delicate with this because they're all going to end up mixing. And unless you had a separate container to put that into later, just trash it. Now, at the very bottom, it's going to be completely one color. So this is all feldspar right here. And now, as I'm getting to the point where the colors are going to mix, I'm just doing little tiny taps and leaving space in between where the pink color can fill in. So now I'll go here into this cotton candy. Okay, now here's where the colors are mixing. So if you're worried about touching glitter, go ahead and use a tool, but I'll just swirl around with my fingers. Okay, now we'll reach the portion that is just the pink, the cotton candy. And now little tiny taps where it's going to blend with the white. I'm going to go from higher up. I'm realizing now that that's actually dispersing even less glitter, so that's good for blending. And now everything else gets the crystal. Now, part of me wishes I tried this project out ahead of time because I don't know if I like <laughs> this greenish color into the pink. I'm sorry. That was... That was bad. And now we get back to that um, adhesive backing that we used before. And I'll go back to my acrylic block and once again really burnish that glitter into the adhesive. and I'm getting glitter everywhere. Like, not just on this sheet, it's all over my, my work surface too. 
Okay, that looks really flat. All right, now that I have everything here, I can rub off as much of the excess glitter as possible. So there you have it, my gradient glitter. Again, when you do this, please pick a better color combination. I'm really actually disappointed in how splotchy that looks. But to save it, I will put a sentiment or something there, you know. No one will notice that it didn't blend quite perfectly. But that's it, and I hope you give this technique a try. Thanks for visiting. Bye.